Hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So, yeah, let us just uh, talk about what medical imaging and image analysis is from the very perspective of an engineer and what are the different various research uh, perspectives are there in this particular field of science and research. Uh, before uh, going in detail, let me tell you, although it sounds quite a bit of like biomedical, uh, medical science kind of thing, but don't worry, I am also an engineer and like, uh, like the similar type of uh, doubt I also had during when I shifted my career from electronics engineer to a biomedical engineer and I find it very much uh, like uh, quite enthusiastic to work in this particular field and the way these days like artificial intelligence, computer vision are emerging and evolving. So this is a very, very uh, like uh, top-notch field in which you can find a lot of their applications and you can contribute in a very good extent. So before going in detail, let me tell you like why this field is at, uh, at all important, why it is like necessary doing this medical imaging and medical image analysis. So definitely the first primary reason comes to the point like there is a huge variability in disease patients and inferences. When you talk about different kinds of disease, it definitely depends on the different number of patients, as well as if you just uh, say like from doctors to doctors, the opinion, opinion also may change. So we need some kind of platform by which we can narrow down the possible causes of the pain or illness for more accurate disease and this diagnostic imaging or medical imaging is providing that way at us. On a very deeper aspect, this medical imaging is providing us a more closer observation or you can say the reconnaissance for disease diagnostics where the doctor can play as a variance and life and death decisions are made on in so, uh, like so much of sufficient information. And definitely when talking about these practical aspects of this uh, machine, uh, medical image analysis things, so all the algorithms and where all the developments has been measured by the success of the past history and the patient recovery. So whatever the machine vision and intelligence algorithm that we are going to implement and develop, that definitely will be tested and validated from the practical aspects. And we are last but not the least, we are not operating in the theory land anymore. Because like all the implementation and diagnostic inference are greatly influenced by the quantitative measurement of from that we get from different field trials and outcomes. And based on that only, any kind of observation that we are immensely talking that would be evolved. Okay. So let us focus on how this particular field has been developed, evolved from the very perspective of computer vision and like machine intelligence. So in the era of 1980, uh, like uh, it is considered like in 1984 or uh, before, uh, like uh, 1958, sorry, uh, during that time when the first X-ray was implemented. And like after that, there was sufficient number of time has been caught. And talking about it around 1980, we have pattern recognition. They are mostly implemented for any kind of 2D image recognition and 2D image analysis. We're talking about during the era of 1990, where we have come up with different knowledge based approaches like uh, machine intelligence, neural network, all these things, which are particularly taking care in this, but, uh, particularly implemented in this uh, medical image analysis field with the knowledge of patient information, the diagnostic history, and all the relevant information that could be available from the patient database. And after that, in the later 90s, we have the any kind of image, medical image analysis was greatly brought with the 3D presentation. Now in the next one decade, there is a success, severe evolution in the machine learning and artificial neural network based intelligence, which has greatly influenced this particular medical image analysis, I mean, starting from diagnosing any particular disease or like uh, uh, say uh, creating uh, any kind of region specific marker or like finding out any kind of affected area from the medical images. It has been greatly uh, point out where the particular field is going and what I want to do with that particular with sort of algorithms. Later in the last decade that we have 
all been like uh, witnessed the a huge leap in the deep learning approaches with complex reasoning team which has means mostly influenced the medical image analysis part to a very large extent now talking about all these things we could get an idea like uh, this compare engineering aspects like whether it is machine vision, big data analytics, augmented reality, artificial intelligence. So all these kind of engineering aspects. So they are greatly influencing or they are like revolving the medical imaging domain to a greater aspect and to bring a pair to bring a healthcare system in which like the patient comfort will be our gate for concern. Okay. So let's have a look in this practical, uh, like uh, operating uh, OT chamber, operation theater chamber. Over here, you see a lot of, although these doctors are playing some kind of surgery in this particular field, but there is like a uh, lot of equipments are available. There are LCD screens, there are like different kinds of machine imaging, uh, like transfer and screen available, which is providing a real time imaging of that particular area. So like you can see like all these people, these people, so however, like they are playing as the God in this particular chamber, but to facilitate their work, there are a lot of equipments and the technology there that is helping them in their own background. Okay. So you can get an idea like how the practical system is particularly working and in which uh, to an extent like the engineering uh, like applications and uh, like uh, solutions are helping these people to bring a prior to create a patient composing healthcare management system. Now, what is its particular areas that we are talking about? Like from a perspective of an engineer, how could I contribute in this medical image, imaging and image analysis? So talking about this thing, there are four biggest stages. Definitely first one is the imaging instrumentation in which we talk about the different instrumentation aspects, how the energy is being associated with the tear tissues, what are the response that has been created, how those signals that has been generated from the tissues will be acquired, how they will be like uh, denoised and how we'll do the signal acquisition, quantization, and lastly like the reconstruction. So you can see there are a lot of engineering applications available, uh, applications available in this particular field uh, with imaging instrumentation. Now next come to the big data analytics in healthcare. Like when we are talking about any kind of hospital systems, definitely like we will talk about the patient uh, database, we'll talk about the doctor database, the disease database, the medicine database. We are operating with lot of, lot of database. And not only for a particular day, that data has been stored on the, on the server and we are doing some kind of longitudinal analysis. You know? Like for a patient, particular patient, what would be the previous diagnosis, what would be the previous like images that we are getting and based on that, how the doctors has prescribed some medication or some kind of diagnosis to that particular patient. All these systems has to be like managed. So for that part, like big data is play, playing a very great team. Next come to the point like medical image analysis, where we are actually talking about developing computational algorithms. So these computational algorithms are purely the mathematical modelings that we are doing. So, and these mathematical models, either it could be based in machine learning or computer vision or some kind of advanced deep learning based framework, which would further uh, facilitate us to do the processing, denoising, classification, all these particular applications. And another more important aspect, which is uh, evolving in the uh, in this uh, this present like present years or nowadays, so that is the augmented reality. That means uh, like how we are augmenting a particular uh, like um, like uh, for example, we are talking about the heart of a particular yeah, a person. So from a very uh, like broader perspective like how I am observing how the heart of that particular person is operating and which particular area is being uh, uh, like pathologic or what kind of disease of that particular patient is having. So that all this kind of information we could uh, gather and we could uh, simultaneously conglomerate in a particular uh, like vision system to create, to provide the doctors a kind of domain or platform that will help to analysis those patients in a very broader aspect. So these are the four 
uh, major uh, basic areas that I think like uh, anyone can put into focus. In this particular presentation, I will mostly talk about this imaging instrumentation and the uh, medical image analysis part. So now give you uh, like a market scenario, like what I am talking about, how it could be beneficial to the market or what it could be the possible opportunity for the new age engineers, like how they can put themselves into the different companies and could gather or secure a very good position in a particular organization. So talking about the machine vision market, which is predicted for 2025 is 13 billion USD across the world, in which you can see like 46% has been estimated for the medical image analysis only. Apart from that, media surveillance automobile, they could take the 54%. So majority, you can see like medical image analysis is taking 46%. So you can get an idea how much people are thinking that how the future is going to transform with this different application of artificial intelligence and machine vision algorithms, how it could translate the medical imaging uh, and medical image analysis in a uh, like different perspectives or different paradigm. So now let's focus on how the AI is putting on this particular diagnostic thing. In this particular graph, you can see from this 2018 to 2022, there is some kind of increase in increment you can see, but from 2020 to 25, there is a very steep increment in the uh, like, uh, like, uh, like global evolution that has been uh, uh, implementable using these AI techniques with a strong CHER that is compound annual growth rate around 36%, which pretty pretty much high. And with this, like we can talk about like careers and job aspects. So you can see like a lot of big companies, or big tank companies. You can see starting from GM to Medtronic, Philips, Siemens, Laurier, Google DeepMind, and like Bosch, Credible Health, QRI. These are the big companies we are putting a lot of people and a lot of effort in developing these different kinds of algorithms. And uh, presently, like there are a lot of opportunities also in this particular field of war and there is some like coincides view of what are the different big tank companies are working and apart from that there are also a lot of startups are also present who are basically uh, like outsourcing the work from these very big companies and doing their own part of job on top of it like if you have think a different kind of uh, objective or idea there are also uh, the opportunity to create your own startups as well like there are different funding uh, opportunity available from our Indian government, like say like whether it is a DSIR or BRAC or IUSSTF. So there are a lot of funding opportunities available if you can even like establish that your idea is going to bring a revolution in the uh, like uh, the future world. Okay, so now talking about all these careers and job aspects. What are these particular people are looking for in a particular man, people man, or student? So basically, if I just subdivide into this the knowledge based in a very technical domain, I could get one is medical imaging, another one is physics and math, another one is AI and machine learning, and the last one, but not the least, is the image processing. How this, uh, talking about this medical imaging, what it is actually like different modalities to know about how these modalities are actually working, what are their principle of operation, how their radiations are interacted with different tissues or organs. So all this kind of thing and definitely like when uh, we are talking about the energies from the different tissues and the organs, so how those uh, signals can be reconstructed to create a, or a proper 2D or 3D image of that particular organ. Person. Now coming to the physics, definitely it is very much important to understand like how the tissue energy interactions, the functional representation of various organs and a different exposure of the different wavelengths of light or say other electromagnetic spectrum, how this physics and maths can be implemented. And AI and machine learning, definitely they are providing the complex reasoning and the computational platform to do the analysis and develop uh, algorithms that could optimize the process and do the uh, diagnostic inference within a few, say several minutes or several hours. And then image processing, it comes to the standing of the intensity distribution then followed by segmentation, artifacts removal, feature representation, visualization, etc. Let's uh, take an example to understand this more detail. 
Now I'm giving one image. That is, uh, I'm telling you this is a laser specker image of the tumor wound. Now, when I'm telling you about this, I'm asking you to do some kind of, so these are the areas, again, I'm telling you, these are the areas which are consisting, comprising the normal tissue, which in this particular area is focusing on the tumor wound, in which these black areas are signifying something and this white area signifies something. Now you can get an understanding, uh, get to know why these fields are at all important to do any kind of analysis of this particular image. Firstly, how this image has been formed. Uh, formed. It's when I'm talking you about laser speckle imaging, so it, there is a specific principle of operation for this particular image modeling. And uh, as you know, this is the laser light is interacting with the tissues. So how the interaction is going on what particular aspects that we are taking into consideration for developing this kind of images. So definitely we need to understand what would be the imaging principle. Secondly, again, what are these dark and the bright regions signifies and how they are related from a medical perspective. Do they have any kind of relevance from the medical background? Yes, they do have. So that thing, that answer we would only get when we have the knowledge of the medical science, a few knowledge, not as a detail like as a doctor, but a few knowledge about the medical, uh, how the electricity or the radiations are interacting with the tissues and what would be the possible uh, in image platform, what would be the intensities will be describing that particular point or pixels into that particular, uh, respective to that particular area of the image. Next, how can the segmentation be operated in this particular image? Now talking about automating all the process, we need to develop the algorithms which will develop, which, uh, in which the patients will do the segmentation by itself on. Now to do the segmentation, definitely either one could go for the image processing based approach or some, someone can go for different kind of clustering based approach. Now how these algorithms are will operate? So that thing also have to know which comes into the image processing domain. And lastly, like from a machine learning perspective, how can the problem be framed? Like definitely in the AI and machine learning, language on it. So once it will be framed, when the, once the data sets, the feature set uh, uh, will be like, uh, used uh, like created properly then it's a just uh, like click task that you can easily operate uh, you develop the algorithm and then the algorithm will do uh, automated clustering or the classification of different areas or different uh, pathologic uh, diseases now let's focus on the imaging for the modalities like when you are talking about medical imaging and medical image analysis both are kind of different like uh, medical imaging, they are mostly oriented with imaging part, the radiation, the reconstruction, the signal acquisition, and image analysis, they are mostly into the image processing, machine learning, developing computational models to do some kind of automated analysis, all this aspect. So coming to the imaging modalities, although we know like we have X-rays, ultrasound, computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, it could be a nuclear imaging, optical imaging, photoacoustic imaging, different. Now, this imaging, uh, uh, all these imaging modalities, they have their own clinical manifestations, like at which point they are used, utilized. So it could be like radiology, cardiology, oncology, neurology, and like this, and definitely the end users or consumers will be the hospital hospitals or diagnostic centers or primary health centers, research centers, or like research lab, like this. Now, let's talking about these imaging modalities. Let's have a look like how these different imaging modalities are can put a big spectrum of uh, imaging the human body uh, from tissue to organ levels. Now let us focus on this electromagnetic spectrum, which is taking a broad shape in which like you can see like there are frequency uh, like radio we have from radio frequency.
हेलो 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 कैन यू कैन सी अभी या वी कैन हियर यू कैन यू प्लीज शेयर द स्क्रीन यस 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 सर्टेनली समथिंग टॉक ओके सी fine uh then talking about the infrared region what we have we have ir imaging uh in which we are mainly focusing on anatomy and physiology so the surface temperature of the uh, particular image hello dr bosa can you please yes, share yes. your screen okay i thought it is already shared okay anyway like uh, just uh, Yeah, can you see, see my screen right now? Yeah, it's okay now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So coming to the uh, X-ray regions, we have X-ray radiology of the CT. Uh, then in the infrared region, we are talking about the IR imaging, which is mainly focusing on the uh, measuring surface temperature, anatomy, and physiology. Then through US imaging, we have a lot of applications on like fetoplacental uh, functions, then anatomy, tissue characteristic, blood flow, all these things. And then in the radio frequency, we are operating with uh, mainly MRI. The magnetic resonance imaging, which is mostly give us the anatomy edema, uh, our blood flow map, and the chemical composition of any kind of tissues, all these things. Now, talking about uh, if you just closely have a look on this particular field, you can see like we have left up intentionally the visual part because this visible region is also important in the medical domain because it has consider, comprises a lot of uh, imaging modalities starting from optical microscopy, laser scanning microscopy, diffuse optical imaging, fluorescence imaging, speckle imaging, optical coherence tomography, photoacoustic imaging, light field microscopy. So see, you, there is a lot of imaging modalities available which are basically operating in this visible region. So now, uh, how these imaging modalities can be differentiated? Look at this particular scale. We have a scale from 10 centimeters starting from mouse to one nanometer where we're talking about small molecules. At different scales, we are imaging different kind of cells, bacteria, virus. This is the scale that has been given. Through our naked eye, we can mostly see about from 100 micrometer to 10 centimeter. But ultrasound can give us facilitated us from one micrometer to uh, several millimeter each. Then the laser, the uh, uh, like scale that I want to go, we have to go for the optical microscopy and the microscopy, electron microscopy things. Now uh, these things is been used to differentiate very different type of reading modalities. Now we have microscopic cell, we have mesoscopic imaging, which are mainly focusing on tissue specific imaging. We have macroscopic imaging, which are focusing on the organ and there are some imaging modalities which is cover the whole body. How they are actually related. Let's see. Over here, you see the confocal microsco microscopy and multifocal microscopy. Although their penetration depth is very low, like within millimeter, but their resolution is very high. It is in the uh, like micrometer region. Talking about the OCT, which is optical coherence tomography, we have the penetration to several centimeters, but the uh, uh, spatial resolution is poor than this confocal microscopy thing, but higher than these other imaging modalities. So you can see over here say trend that the more the penetration, the lesser the resolution will be. So talking about this optical imaging techniques, they are mostly providing very high spatial resolution at the cost, like their penetration depth is very much low. So this laser speckle imaging, OCT, all these kind of imaging modalities. Now this ultrasound and photoacoustic tomography, photoacoustic imaging can provide a very good deal of the uh, penetration to several centimeters as well as like uh, spatial resolution to several micrometers, several hundred micrometers. Then we have diffuse optical tomography, PET, SPECT, MRI, X-ray CT, all their penetration depth is very high. So they can do the uh, body level scanning and body level imaging, but at the same time, the spatial resolution was quite low compared to other imaging modalities. 
So these are the discriminating factors that we have to keep it in our mind. Like when we are going for imaging a particular thing. So like we have to find out whether we are going for any kind of cellular imaging or tissue imaging or organ imaging. Based on that, we have to choose our imaging particular field and accordingly like the imaging principle interactions uh, the algorithms, everything will be changed. Now, uh, let's focus on the image analysis part. Basically, this diagram, although I have mentioned as the medical images analysis block diagram, but it could be useful for different other prospects also, any kind of other image analysis also. First, what we have from the imaging modalities, we could get some kind of images, a set of images, I would say, and the knowledge about the particular patient and about the particular system, modalities that I am utilizing. So, all these images will be further pre-processed and we will do the segmentation. So for the pre-processing, we have different spatial and frequency domain filtering. We have denoising, contrast enhancement and histogram equalization, like intensity transformation. There are different kinds of pre-processing techniques are available, which is basically the primary goal of this uh, pre-processing techniques is to just reduce the noise as well as in increase the contrast of that particular medical image. Now next, our target would be doing the segmentation. What object is actually particularly well looking for? whether we are looking for a particular tumor in an MRI image or any kind of like uh, vascular abnormality in an optical microscopy. So like these are the target uh, uh, like object that we have to set before doing the segmentation. And in segmentation, I, we have like from very basic histogram based resulting to vision growing morphological operation, entropy based resulting. Then we have some advanced model on anisotropic diffusion, active contour and level six. And then definitely the higher local color clustering or K-means clustering based approach or any kind of Bayesian learning based approach by which we can also do the segmentation. Then once the image will be segmented, we could target the particular area of our interest, then the next task will be to do some kind of feature extraction and selection. The feature extraction means the goal is to identify what kind of abnormality present, whether there is any kind of abnormality present at all or not. And then if it is present, then what kind of abnormality it will be. So finding out all this aspect, we need to compute some kind of feature matrix or feature set. Definitely, like uh, one more thing that I will definitely mention, like this feature computation, we do not need in case of modern deep neural network based architecture, because the deep neural network based architecture has been uh, created in such a fashion that the network itself will create its own feature set. So nonetheless, like if you are just using the other uh, machine learning based techniques, then we need to go for uh, performing this feature extraction and selection in which we could talk about the geometrical features, we could talk about color and textures, we could talk about wavelet and frequency coefficients or statistical features or local binary patterns. There are numerous number of features that we can compute. Now after computation, definitely we have to look for like whether this feature set at all important or not. So what we have to do, we have to go for some kind of statistical analysis of the feature importance and or we can do some kind of feature selection and ranking. So there are statistics present like these states came to the base density and above, which could be done uh, on this particular feature states to an analyze how important these features would be or like one could utilize this kind of algorithms like sequential forward selection, principal component analysis, random forest, uh, like decision tree to find out what features are important and what features are significant to that solve that particular problem. Next, the ultimate task is to develop the machine learning algorithm for the disease classification in which we have different supervised and unsupervised algorithms present. In supervised, we have Bayesian support victim machine, artificial neural network, uh, then decision tree, random forest, k nearest neighbor. In unsupervised, we have k-means, fuzzy c-means, and there are also other techniques which consider, uh, like consist of autoencoder, convolution, and neural network. And definitely, the modern techniques in the deep neural network based architecture they are hugely implemented for this uh, classification uh, purpose for disease diagnostic inferencing. In a, in, a, in a nutshell, like we, when we talk about all this aspect, you can get an idea. It's a completely holy grail that uh, not only include the medical generation of these medical images, but at all the reconstruction, the image analysis, understanding the automation, 
in that particular process uh, till to the performing the diagnosis and control robotic intervention. So completely, it is kind of a holy grail, which is comprising all the different engineering aspects by which we can solve the uh, like healthcare related problems with reduced human intervention and we could faster the process in this in between. So talking about some uh, steps that first of all, we have image formation, like talking about the 2D MRI image, for example, uh, how this image will be formed from this uh, particular uh, imaging modality for say like how the reconstruction should be done, how the absorption, radiation absorption should be done in the different tissues, whether it is X-ray or like uh, for ultrasound, like uh, how the acoustic pressure will be differentiated from different organs to organs. Uh, so all these different things we have to take into consider during the reconstruction step to develop this kind of 2D MRI images and stacking of this 2D MRI images, we could create a volume of that particular organ of interest, definitely. Then next step we have, we comes to the point of image segmentation in which we have different techniques to do the segmentation purpose. Over here I have given you an example of the uh, brain MRI image in which I'm trying to uh, segment the gray matter and the white matter part. So over here you can get an idea how the segmentation has been done. So this is the very basic goal of the segmentation, splitting the different area of interest and identify at particular which uh, object or area we are looking work, uh, our work will be focusing. So the techniques could be region based uh, in which we have seated region growing, active contour and ladders, uh, level set, and we could have edge based segmentation, which is in which we have watershed segmentation, or we could go for data clustering. Uh, in which we have higher and higher and bigger clustering and chemist clustering based techniques. So there are a numerous number of segmentation techniques available. Only thing we have to identify again, the important thing is not necessarily all the algorithms will perform better in a particular imaging modality. We have to understand that each and everything, every image modality will comprise of different kind of radiation or absorption, you can say. So like the identification of this particular imaging technique is very much draws to a particular imaging modality so that it could like uh, operates on the limitations on this one, that particular imaging modality as well as operating on the different physics that has been used to develop those kind of images. Next, we have definite image registration. This is a very good uh, area in which a lot of work has been done. Basically, when we are talking about uh, different uh, in a, uh, using different imaging modality to image a particular organ, for example, fusion imaging. We are talking about PET CT or SPEC CT. This type of different two different modalities are taking image of a particular organ or particular area of interest. So now to analyze the different architecture or the structure of within that particular uh, image or the anatomy in that particular image. We need to scale it into a proper way in which we can understand both the scales of the images coming from the both modalities will be same. So that is what the image registration has been done. Also, when we are doing a kind of uh, temporal domain imaging, like we are talking about uh, like imaging for say like five minutes or three minutes of live animal, live animals or live live humans. So there are a lot of disturbances appeared into the imaging process. Now to create from those a stack of images, if you just want to try to reform a 3D volume, so then definitely there will be a lot of noises present until unless we will align all those images. Like, like so for this purpose, this image registration comes into this particular play. And we have also different techniques and strategies to do this kind of image registration. Either it could be image to image, say for same or different modalities, or it could be image to models like using the deformital models or model to model in which we are uh, uh, working with graph theoretic approaches. Now let's look at an example to understand better about all these medical image analysis systems. So, uh, Let's talk about these images. We can see this image image modality I told, uh, like uh, shared with you as you, uh, like it is a laser speckle imaging in which we are operating with a 675 nanometer of diode laser having power of five milliwatt. The CCD camera I'm using to take the image is a 12 bit and doing the frames uh, recording at 50 frames per second with 40 
480 gross 640 pixels. The resolution, transverse resolution is around 7.4 micrometer and the depth scale is around 3 millimeter. So now <coughs> uh, you can over here see all this information I am giving you as a, a priori knowledge to this particular system, how this image will be formed. And this knowledge will be definitely used to do some kind of further analysis on this particular image. For this uh, example, in the next step, what we'll do, what we are doing the pre-processing and segmentation. In this basic image, it is very much hard to see what areas is particularly indicating what regions or what are the important uh, regions we should look after and what are the different characteristics of those regions. So what we have to do, we need to do some kind of pre-processing to increase the contrast in this particular thing. So uh, as a pre-processing approach, what we have adopted, we have adopted histogram equalization and adaptive computer contrast computation. In detail, definitely I will discuss all these kind of steps, you know, in my uh, like uh, next lectures. But at this point, like uh, I'm just trying to elaborate how this whole steps is pro properly can be implemented. Then what we have to do, like uh, we have this regions uh, image as a whole of this particular region. Then we have areas of some kind of abnormality and we have areas of normal regions. So what we need to do, we have to do some kind of segmentation. So for segmentation over here, I have used some data clustering using the features like wavelet energies, local binary patterns and statistical features. So these features, I just compute these features on these particular images and implement the k-means clustering algorithm on this image. Then I will get back to this particular area or this particular segmented region. <clears throat> now the next task will be once I will get this segmentation. Next is to do the machine learning decisions. Over here I have used one supervised learner using extreme large learning machine that is a form of the artificial learning network. The speciality of this network is it is very much fast enough to, because here we can choose the network parameters as a like a white noise process and it is uh, uh, the training time is very much shorter than compared to the multi-layer perceptron and back uh, back propagation model. <coughs> Then uh, what we have to do for computing, we are, uh, doing this we are supervised line or implementing in the training process, we need to do some kind of uh, like uh, annotation, like annotation, like this annotation has been done by some kind of medical uh, person who is well aware about this particular region and who have knowledge that which portion is what type. So like in the red areas, it is showing me uh, the progressive area nature of the bone where the green areas are showing me uh, like uh, non-progressive region in which the growth of the tumor is kind of stopped. But in the dark area, it is like the poor progress is pretty much faster compared to the bright speckles areas. So these kind of knowledge that we need from the medical practitioners, also those who are having knowledge from this particular imaging modality, otherwise, uh, as well as the like uh, tumor generation and uh, tumor progression. So they are helping us to develop this kind of annotated images. So using this kind of annotations, this labeled image, uh, all these kind of uh, features like statistics, entropy, face congruency, cabo, hard features, we will develop this kind of neural network based extreme learning machine which will operate on the these images and give us this kind of output so over here you see these red patches areas are showing us the progressive region whereas the green patches areas are showing us the not progressive region in which which is kind of similar this two. definitely there are some kind of errors present in this system but the accuracy is pretty much high it is quite uh, more than 96 percent as well so you can see like how this whole approach I am developing or implementing for doing some kind, developing some kind of automated classifications for segmenting the tumor regions from the laser speckled images. So these are the examples. Now some kind of resources that I need to inform you like there are uh, different challenges, online challenges are going on in which like any kind of interested person if you are quite interested in doing and implementing all this algorithm, a lot of problems you can find out in these definite challenges like Mikai, ISB, SPI medical imaging. These are the different challenges and all over the world people are utilizing different data sets to do this sort of solution. These are very much prestigious challenges I must say. And uh, about like uh, available toolboxes 
that we can use. We have biodigital human, maybe Slab. Definitely Python knowledge is very much important in this particular case. And if we're uh, working with some deep learning aspects, like we need to know also like tensor flow carriers, uh, could, uh, like this, this learning framework that could be implementable along with the Python. Then we have like MicroDI Computer, DL frameworks. So these are the some kind of toolbox which could be useful for doing this kind of development of this kind of algorithms. And there are definitely some groups which are presently working in this kind of work images and medical different kind of medical imaging problems and in developing algorithms to solve some kind of uh, to automize any kind of process in doing some medical analysis, uh, medical imaging analysis and complete diagnostic inference. There are very prestigious groups of uh, researchers across the world who are working in this particular field. Uh, you can definitely look into their homepage. You could find their very curious. If you are just curious enough to explore yourself in this particular field, I will suggest you to like uh, go and some research, you know, do some research in this particular groups. So as a take home message, like I'm just coming to the end of my today's lecture. So as a take home message, like uh, uh, I just uh, want to suggest you like to go through some of the very good area literatures. You could find some kind of classroom lectures which are available from Carnegie Mellon and Duke Monix. They are very much influ they are influential and helpful. I, I must say like this Duke Monix session is very, very good because I practically attended that thing as well. So it is, these are very much helpful to develop your knowledge as well as skills to give you a deep understanding of how this medical imaging uh, analysis has been uh, a lot of work are doing in this particular field. With that, the next, what we will discuss is the X-ray computed tomography. We'll talk about different imaging instrumentation, different generations of computed tomography, then acquisition, signal reconstruct, image reconstruction, and I will put more focus on this image reconstruction and the signal acquisition part compared to the image processing and segmentation. Then we will have a case study based approach to uh, more understand how this particular uh, how a particular problem has to be solved. Thank you very much. Uh, you can reach me at uh, Koshik at the GISIS. Thank you for listening. And I will be uh, like happy to answer your questions at this point. Hello, uh, if you guys have any questions, you can write in the Q&A session, uh, uh, then I could answer one by one. City, are you there? Uh, sir? Yeah, uh, one question I got from Swastik. Uh, Pursue career in this particular field is you know, a very good option for the same. Yes, definitely. Uh, they have a lot of opportunities, specifically, specifically, I'd like, say, a uh, lot of well equipped lab is present uh, in whether you are going for optical based imaging or MRI or like CT based imaging. Uh, like, there is a very good opportunity in doing some uh, this kind of uh, either master's or PhD or postdoc, any kind of uh, like studies. It would be a very good option for you, or it would be definitely helpful. And for this time being, like you can definitely go through your video lectures. It is, I think, it is also available on YouTube. Uh, anyway, if you don't, then I 
and share the slides later. And definitely, uh, I have given you my email ID, so hope that you get uh, that. Then, which, uh, another question, uh, which filter is good for enhancing the quality of X-ray image? Yeah, uh, definitely, actually, there are a uh, lot of filters present. It depends on what particular imaging of we are doing on particular which generation of CT missing or we are doing. Uh, can, uh, I will tell you this thing about tomorrow class in detail uh, when we talk about the X-ray image and the CT. So I would request you to like attend tomorrow's session will get a very good uh, uh, comprehension. Yeah, one more, uh, I think one more note from Sostek, like I said, also a small request from my side, it would be really amazing if you could also cover molecular imaging in this lecture series. Uh, molecular imaging, see, uh, Sostek, actually, uh, the time frame is very much short, short in the sense, like, uh, indeed, this imaging techniques, there are a lot to discuss in this time. And uh, molecular imaging itself is a very big domain in which there are a lot of imaging modalities are present and which you can talk about. But yeah, sure, in my third lecture, I am mostly focusing on like imaging in the optical regime, uh, in which some portion of the molecular imaging is already Thanks. Yeah, <clears throat> so already you know, Professor uh, Boshak has talked about some of the modalities which are essentially molecular imaging. Molecular imaging means, for example, he has talked about optical coherence tomography, OCT. So this is a kind of a molecular imaging. So it's, uh, you know, ultimately the whole concept is, can we have some kind of an imaging modality by which in pathology, what do you do? In radiology, you take these kind of images. In pathology, you have to do biopsy. In fact, all these uh, imaging modalities that uh, Professor Boshak has just now mentioned, now these are not gold standard. If you go to a doctor and if you take, suppose, the MRI, and based on MRI, the doctor may say that, okay, there is a tumor. But then to make sure that, okay, whether the tumor is malignant or not, you have to do biopsy. And biopsy is, uh, means that it is a surgical process. So many people, they don't, they become afraid and they don't go for biopsy. That is also bad because that is the gold standard. You have to take the biopsy, see the entire sample in the microscope, and then you have to do the image processing. Or in fact, what happens is the cytologist or the pathologist, they will see and then they will say that, okay, whether this is uh, normal or abnormal. Now, the whole science is moving towards the direction where uh, people are thinking, scientists are thinking that whether we can have some modality by which biopsy will not be required at all. That means, can we have a imaging modality where you can even go to the cellular level. You can just see the cells without doing the biopsy. So biopsy is invasive. So that's why the current day, the whole research is going towards non-invasive and kind of very high resolution imaging modalities. At the molecular level, even you can go. So Professor Boshak has mentioned in his whole uh, beautiful you know, presentation, on the diverse types of uh, imaging modalities that are there. And then you can do the image processing on, on those modalities, on any of them. Uh, so these questions are good. And uh, molecular imaging, I think that Professor Bosha can discuss uh, maybe that next, uh, either tomorrow or I mean in the next lecture, maybe for 10, uh, for about 20 minutes, 
Yeah, actually, but, uh, yes, I mean, we will be uh, in our course on data science here. This will be one of the major areas where molecular imaging uh, will be dealt with uh, in, in quite a detail. And uh, especially some of the optical imaging uh, modalities, uh, which are extremely important. And then he also had talked about uh, uh, the other kinds of modalities, as you have seen, that which are having very high resolution, but the major problem is penetration is very less. So penetration is less means you can do the imaging of the skin, the skin cancer. For skin cancer, this kind of modalities are very good. So optical, you know, OCTs can be used for eyes because you don't need to move very much deep inside, but then you can have a very good, uh, you know, diagnostic uh, tools for, the, and then you can see that whether the you know, optical nerve is uh, getting flattened or it is getting thinned down and if it is getting thinned down, that means there will maybe some problem like glaucoma and all in the near future. So, so lots of such things can be done. So he may explain some of these things, maybe you know, because he has got his other things which have to be covered in the next two lectures. But you can talk about for five, ten minutes next. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. It was a good lecture and yes, uh, uh, quite informative. Sir, uh, I have actually two more questions actually. Uh, so not taking so much time, but uh, just quickly, I'm just uh, trying to give you the answer. What are the criteria to select the segmentation technique? That is, which one will be more helpful? Uh, see, uh, this is a very actually practical oriented question. It's a very good question, I must say. Uh, it depends actually on the image type of image that you are looking for and the object you are trying to segment. What kind of your image you are operating with depends on that like uh, the algorithms will be chosen because if i say like active contour for example say active contour it's a very popular method and like uh, like well-known method for the segmentation but at the same time like uh, if you are implementing this active contour technique on the speckle type of images then it would be like the accuracy will be very much reduced because the speckle images we are talking about very small small type of contours so it's purely developed means uh, depending on what type of image we are working with and what is our target area of doing the segmentation. Uh, another question, could image processing techniques be applied for estimating gain density of uh, nanoparticles on a solid surface using scanning electron microscope photographs? Uh, uh, see, uh, definitely like for the technical like I have a very limited knowledge on these uh, nanoparticles things, but yeah, definitely if it is a like uh, scanning electron microscope photographs, definitely any kind of image processing. If it is an image, then image processing algorithm definitely can be. Uh, yeah. So like whatever <laughs> the target area. You can do. Yeah. 